Okay, today we're going to go through a little rundown of the new version of AVG, AVG Antivirus Edition 9. Um, if you are an existing customer of ours, you already know and love this piece of software. If not, then uh, this is our preferred security software. Um, tested for over 10 years, does an excellent job, does what it's supposed to do. It's a lightweight product, so it's not going to bog down your system. Um, to, uh, to, to give you this kind of prevention. Uh, so let's go through the software. If you're familiar with AVG, previous versions before 9, this will look familiar to you. Here you can see all of your components and see that they are all in perfect working order. If there's a problem with one of your components, you'll see that this icon down here will be gray, excuse me, rather than multicolored. And if it's gray, then you'll open this up and you'll see one of these will not have a green check mark indicating a problem with it. Um, at that point, you click on it and it'll tell you the problem with it. Um, generally, when it's in perfect work and order, this is what you're going to see. You'll see a multicolored icon. You'll see everything lit up in here. Um, a couple things about uh, updating. Updating is done automatically every four hours by default. So not generally something that you have to be concerned with also computer scans. Computer scans are set up when you install the software. If we install the software it will be set to run at 2 a.m. so you can leave the computer on at night when you're not using it and let it do its virus scans then um, preventing it slowing down the system when it's doing a full virus scan of the whole computer. So if we set it up these are the settings we're going to go through. So it would be advanced settings and we're going to go into scheduled scans. This is what's set up when you set up the system. Um, set for 2 a.m. every day. By default, I believe this is checked off. Um, if you're configuring this yourself, you're going to want to uncheck this if you're using the same type of a scan uh, scanning system that we're using to scan when we're not using the computer. Uh, reason being is if you have the computer off, it will start the scan as soon as you turn it on. So you wouldn't want that. So we uncheck that. We're setting it to 2 a.m. Um, also by default in the new version 9 this is unchecked scan for rootkits we want to check that off we want it to scan for rootkits as well when it does its scheduled scan also this is generally set to automatic scan speed and we're going to want to set that to high because again it's scanning when we're not using it we want it to get it get it over with quick so when the morning comes um, we can go to work so that's the configuring of the scan um, what to scan this is generally just going to be left as is to scan everything. If you have something that's being um, detected as a virus that you know is not a virus, um, for whatever reason the, the program may have the characteristics of a virus but you know that it is not, you can set those in exceptions in here. You can tell it a program or a whole directory to leave out of scan so it doesn't uh, continue to detect programs that you know and use are fine as a virus. Um, that's a rare situation that you'll have a program that it thinks is a virus that is not but um, if that does present itself you could you could handle that right from here. Now as far as looking at your scans um, when they're done another thing you're going to want to check from time to time is to see what's it been doing. Has it been detecting things? Has it been removing things? Uh, things like that. So you're going to go into history, scan results. Here you can see a list of scans and their results. The green ones are going to be good scans that didn't find anything and the red are going to be scans that found something. So let's go into one of these that found something. You can see that three were found and three were not removed. In a situation like this where certain things are not removed and the result column says still infected, this is something that a professional is going to have to help you with to remove these type of viruses that not just AVG but any virus system would not be able to remove. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a problem where you'd want to contact a professional when there's infections that are still infected. Generally, 90% of the time, what you're going to see on your scan results is that it found some and removed them. Um, and you'll see those over here. Over here, you'll see infections. These are um, virus infections or spyware infections. Warnings are going to be things <coughs> excuse me, like tracking cookies, things that are not necessarily a threat, but you may just want to get rid of them, and you can do that by remove all unhealed infections, we'll remove all these um, and then information is information on the infections found. So that's a rundown of how to check your scheduled scans. Excuse me. In addition, if you have um, 
uh, more than one user on your computer, you may want to be checking your resident shield detections as well. And you do that by going into history and then resident shield detections. And what resident shield detections are, are detections made just while you're using the computer. It's not, it's not finding these things during a scan, it's detecting them as trying to do something while you're using the computer. It will present you with a box that has heal, delete, move to vault, options like that. Um, fourth option is cancel. And if you're not the one using the computer and someone's just hitting cancel, then you may just want to take a look at this from time to time. And this would have a list of the detections it detected. And in the second column would be the actions that the user took. So you can see if it detected something in the past and someone just said cancel and it may still be there. Now this is only relevant if it's before it does its 2AM virus scan because when it does its virus scan it's going to take action on those items um, even outside of the scope of this resident shield detection and outside of the scope of the way you answer this this question but this is just another area to check on detections that have been made on your system. There's also some uh, lesser used options is the email scanner detection and the web shield findings. The web shield is a new feature that checks the websites you're going to and determines if they are safe websites. You'll get a green check mark next to search results in Google and search engines like that that'll indicate this site is okay. And if it, if you're trying to go to a site that is knows is not okay, it will prevent you from going to it and it will notify you. Um, so that's a little rundown on how to use the program, how to use it to your advantage, uh, some of the newer features, and uh, also when it comes to scanning files, a lot of times people have uh, children, young kids, um, teenagers download music and things like that, no matter what you tell them. If that's the case, um, you could just ask them to just scan these files before they open them. And doing that with AVG is really simple. You just go into wherever the file may be, and you just right click the file or folder and you pick scan with AVG and that's going to scan just that particular file that you selected and if we could just get them to do that or just get anyone who's downloading items to do that that's just another step in the right direction when it comes to uh, preventing viruses especially when it comes to like these file sharing type of systems where people are downloading music and things like that because you almost immediately after downloading these things people are running them to listen to them or view them um, and if they're a virus, then they're running a virus. So to prevent that, it just a quick scan takes a minute, and that will pretty much uh, keep your system virus-free. So that's a little rundown on the new AVG version 9.